there I was, on my morning jog, wearing my reflective vest so that cars didn't hit me. Thinking, what a beautiful day. Just taking my time, relaxing, seeing the sights. When I happenstanced upon a box. 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 I thought, what the f is that? My curiosity began to peak. I approached the box. What could be inside? I brushed the sand away. This mysterious box must have been here for years, months, days, hours, who knows. I just knew that whatever was inside was going to change my life forever. I scraped the sand. It's... it can't be. It can't... no. No. What's up, guys? This is my vlog voice. Um, today we're going to discuss the granulizer, the hidden gem of FL Studio. I'm very reluctant to show this to you because I've actually searched for tutorials on this thing myself, and they only have a couple thousand views. So hopefully I can kind of blow this thing up and show you how the granulizer that's literally been on FL Studio since you probably got it in like FL Studio 7 has been there the whole time, but you weren't using it in a cool way and I want to show you how you can make really cool noises from it. So today, I'm going to show you how we're going to turn a lion growl into this. Um, cool. And that's how I made this whole entire Lion Kit Volume 4 sample pack. Um, it was actually made all through granulizing or granular resynthesis. Granular resynthesis just means stretching pitch audio over a course of time, I think. I'm pretty sure. So. Uh, first thing I want to show you is where I got the sound from. I went to Splice and I grabbed a lion sound. Uh, this is the lion roar. That's the original sound. So I put it in the folder, dragged and dropped it into FL Studio. Um, I finally switched to FL 12. I'm about 10 years too late, but I did it. Um, so here is the granulizer. Uh, here's the original sound. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to load the granulizer um, and you're going to grab the sound and just drag, drag and drop it into the granulizer. So now it's sampling that sound. And the whole kind of key to making it sound really cool and stretching it is you're going to create automation clips for the attack time, the hold time, and the grain spacing. I never really mess with the wave spacing. If you want to look at what these things specifically do, feel free to look that up. I don't actually know what they're doing. I just know the more and more you mess with the automation, the crazier sounds you can get. So for example, uh, for Lion Kit 4, I'll just play you a couple of the one shots. So all those sounds were made from using the granulizer and resynthesizing sounds. So uh, here is my new automation that I just dropped out or that I just put out, I think, here we go, grain attack time. And what I want to do is I'm going to actually, uh, oops, let's just go here. Okay, here's the one. So here's our new sound. So I'm going to automate the pitch as well, um, and then I'm just going to draw a MIDI note in, kind of like I did for the initial thing that you see there. So here, I'm just going to draw it like the length of one bar put it in here. Uh, I'm going to mute these. These were the original sound that I did. So that's what it originally sounds like. Um, and you'll notice the more and more you kind of mess with these settings, that turns into a sort of one shot. That's the grain spacing. Uh, that already sounds totally different than it originally sounded. So what I usually do is I automate the pitch. Um, and that will give it kind of a cool, because like I said, uh, granular synthesis is the stretching of pitch and time. So the pitch also totally changes it. But what I really have found does like the craziest stuff is when you stretch the time knob. So this starts to give it a groove, it kind of depending on the tempo of the song. So if I just move the knob a teeny bit, it's, it's trying to make it match up to the BPM. So if I put the metronome on, it gets these crazy sounds, and the more you stretch it, 
So you get these crazy sounds. So what I usually do is I get something like the original one. And I'll do like monophonic stretching, which also resamples it and makes it sound a little crazier. Just kind of mess with the pitch. The point is, is the more you do stuff like that, and the more you kind of tweak these sounds, uh, the possibilities are kind of endless. Um, and I really think this tool is amazing, and you can make really cool percussion loops or anything. You could put anything in there, and that's kind of how I got this original sound. Like, just so you know, like I don't know too much about sound design. I'm not like a self-proclaimed genius. But I did send these so sounds to like Kill the Noise and other artists I look up to and they kind of said they were dope, which is cool to get someone who knows so much about sound design to kind of like complement this resynthesis process. I think this is cool because you don't need to know too much. You literally can just sit there and tweak knobs for hours and get amazing sounds and amazing results. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this pack, this sample pack, and thanks for watching.